Okay, so in this video I wanted to go over some stuff with what is currently my favorite frame in the game. Hildren, Mommy, Muscle Mommy. I, I've watched like damn near every single video there is about her on YouTube. And I just wanted to share some insights I might have as to how to jolt her and how to use her. Um, because there's, there's a lot of different ways you can build her, some effective, some less so, but I wanted to talk a bit about them. So, look, I've got quite a few builds for her, I, six separate builds for her right now. I, I want to get another Hildred, but the problem would be Archon Shards. We'll go over the Archon Shards in a minute here. So, we're going to start off with my first build, okay? So... Something that I, I don't like to play frames if I don't have at least a reason to, right? If there's no reason to play that frame specifically, okay? For example, if I'm going to be a tank, if I'm going to play a Nars just to tank, then my, I might as well just play Revenant, okay? Like, there has to be a reason that that frame is worth playing. They have to bring something to the table, even if it's not as effective as something else. It has to have something sort of unique as far as a play style or something. Otherwise, I just feel like it's not worth it. So, it, I had a lot of trouble trying to find that sort of little niche that Hildren would fit into. So, with her abilities, you've got her first ability, of course, which is Bale Fire. It is, to be honest, really, really bad, at base at least. And it takes a lot of investment to get it to do any sort of decent amount of damage. Mostly due to the horrible, horrible base stats. It is sitting at a measly 5% crit chance, a 1.5 crit multiplier, and 10% status chance. That is not even close to being good. It is really hard to get it to do good damage. It does have really high base damage, though, so there's that, I guess. Um, and it has no damage fall off on the explosion. Um, it doesn't show it here, but if you were to look it up on the wiki, the explosion radius from the center, the epicenter to the edge of the explosion, there's no fall off. Whereas most explosive weapons, like the Kuva Brahm, I believe that has like 90% fall off. So you're going to lose a lot of damage at the edge of the explosion. And on top of that, it scales multiplicatively with range and with uh, primed. What is the mod called for? Fulmination. Yes, prime fulmination. So range affects how far the explosion is, right? How big the, big the explosion is. Normally it is at 3. It's 3.09 because what my range is at right now. But if this was... Alright, so let's say I put on 100% range. It goes up to 6 explosion radius. Well, then that 6 is multiplied by 1.44 because of the fulmination. Um... I'm lazy. I'm not going to do math on that. It's just under 9. So, it's got some pretty good AoE if you were to build into it. It's other stats not so great, but AoE. At least there's something there. So, you can go for it, but it tends to not be insanely effective. And more importantly, if your shields bottom out, it cancels the ability. And you have to wait to get your shields back to recast it. And I find that that tends to be a really big problem when I'm doing endurance runs because my shields bottom out all the time and then I just pillage and get them back, but I can't, I'm constantly having to exit Balefire forcefully because of that. So then you have pillage. Now, you can build around pillage, but it has its own problem that it's her helmets. So if you're going to build pillage, why not just put it on someone else? Because there are other Warframes that can make more use of pillage than she can. And... Now, she does have the upside of her passive, so where she gets a 3.5 second shield gate duration. And honestly, that's one of the best things about her, because normally the cap is 2.5. But, Pillage, amazing ability, and I'm, I'm probably going to make a whole video about Pillage specifically in the future, because I believe it is the strongest helmet ability in the game. It is just insane. But... You can't really use it on her as, like, the, the reason for using her when you could just put on somebody else. Um, Haven, her third, is her support ability. It gives it her... Any allies nearby are given a shield cap increase, increased shield recharge, and they're, they also gain the benefit of her passive of, of a 3.5 second shield gain. So that's fairly nice, but it 
it tends to drain your shields really fast when you have a lot of allies around and enemies around too, because when there's enemies nearby, it will passively drain based off how many enemies there are. So like, if I cast it here, see it's draining a little bit, only because of my worm. If you have no enemies or allies or companions, it won't drain any. But if I go up to these enemies, all of a sudden it's draining way, way faster. And that's kind of a problem, because then, if you're using Haven, you cannot passively regenerate shields. Yeah, you're going to be spamming Pillage all the time, but just like your first, if your shields bottom out, it's going to cancel the ability, and that's a real pain in the ass. And not having active means, even if you, even though you can just spam Pillage, as soon as you stop getting hit, you can start regenerating your shields again, which is huge for Hildren, since like, her entire kit is based around shields. So, it's not really great for building around it specifically either. Then here we're going to have to switch the build to see her 4. Wow, hang on a second. Um, here we go. Her 4, Aegis Storm, which is what people usually subsume off of her. I think it's better than most people think, but it's still not great. Because you can't use Pillage while it's active. You can't cast Haven while it's active. You can have Haven active by casting it and going into it. But it drains shields really, really fast. Even faster than Haven. It For every enemy nearby, like, you see, I have negative efficiency, but 43.75 shields per second per enemy is just absurd. Though it does have very effective crowd control, like, enemies cannot do anything. They're suspended in air. They can't do anything to attack you. And because of how they're held up, you can get super easy headshots for more damage or building in Karnon. And they just passively drop energy orbs which can help your allies keep their energy up. So that's quite nice, except again, you just, you're gonna lose your shields really fast because you can't cast Pillage in it. You can use Balefire in it, though you cannot aim Balefire, which is very unfortunate. And while it shows you have two Balefires while you're holding Asia Storm, that's purely a visual effect. It does not do any more damage and you can't fire faster. So Asia Storm, really hard to build around. So, that doesn't really leave a whole lot of room. I, what I ended up going for is a build where you make use of having Pillage plus another helmet, right? Because yeah, you can put Pillage on another Warframe, but you can't put Pillage and another helmet on one Warframe. You don't get two helmets. So, it's mostly between Pillage, the helmet, and her passive. That's going to make her have somewhat of a unique playstyle that's actually worth using. So... My first build here, this is just a tank build, something a lot of Warframes can do, a shield tank build. Nothing special about it. It's got roar, it's got corrosive projection, 328% strength to full strip. Because to full strip armor, you need 400% strength normally on pillage. But corrosive projection brings it down by eight, a flat 18% on all enemies. So 328, which gives 82%, is just enough to full strip enemies. Um, this is my lazy build. It doesn't really fulfill the requirement that I set out to have of a unique way to play here, but it's just what I had when I first started using it. Uh, then you can go for a pillage build. This is a way to use pillage that is unique to her, Blazing Pillage. It's an augment where enemies affected by her three, that's important, so you have to have her three active. Enemies affected by her three that are then affected by pillage when you cast it will have a heat tick added to them. You also gain 50 additional shields per enemy hit with Pillage. Uh, you can use, with Ar with, use this with Archon Vitality to apply two heat procs, which is basically doubling your damage. Now, this is a way that I think a lot of Hildren players use her. If I had to guess, like half of the people probably use her this way. And it's not bad. It can work. But there are other Warframes that can use Heat Inherit to a better effect than her. So I just feel like it's not as great, and then you end up having to build range, because you can forego range on pillage normally, you just need duration, since it goes the the pulse that goes out is based off duration, not range. So this way you if you have this on, you need to build range for her three, because that's your nuking range. Otherwise you can't hit enemies with your fire. It's not bad, but it's not as great as I would have preferred it to be. Uh, if I do use this build, though, it can be fairly effective with an Augurus. 
for heat inherits. It doesn't have as much heat inherit as an epitaph would because of prime heated charge and the dual stat 6060 mod of heat. But it balances out if you have a ribbon for Yogris and you don't have a ribbon for your secondary like an epitaph. So, and honestly, you know what? Kuvagris is cooler. Don't even at me. It's just, it's a rocket launcher. What more can you ask for? Rocket launcher with big explosions and fire. So this is decently effective. These are 175 steel paths corrupted heavy goons, right? Yeah, yes. And roar is important here because it double dips on dots. It gives a very large damage buff. Now, if we were to say, just shoot all these guys and then cast. This is just the Kuva Agris, right? Don't burn ticks because I didn't cast Haven. It's fairly effective because really you want to compare is it really worth having the extra heat procs when you can just have the heat from Agris? But if we were to cast Haven and then we shoot these guys, we'll just do one on each end and then we'll full strip. I mean, it's, it's decent. It could be better, I feel like, but it's not bad by any means. A very interesting way, and honestly, this is one of the more fun ways to play children. So, then we've got her third build. Uh, this is a unique way that o only Hildren can do this. It is Voracious Metastasis. So, Voracious Metastasis normally costs 50 energy, and it drains 50 energy, and then gives 50 energy over 10 seconds to all nearby allies with an affinity range. Um, when you put a Helmet ability on Hildren, because she takes shields, it multiplies the energy cost by 10 then how much energy you consume to cast the ability also affects how much it gives. So having negative efficiency gives more. And then having a negative duration makes it go out faster. So with this, it gives 775 energy to teammates over 7.25 seconds. That's a lot of energy. Really, really fast. And no other frame can have this level of effect with it. So she can just be a battery for all of your other teammates by using Voracious Metastasis. Um, yeah, I mean, really, if you wanted to do this, you could just go Haro and have a lot of range and kill stuff while your 2 is active. But Haro's a lot less tanky than Hildren. Not that that ends up mattering too much, but then she can also have Pillage still at the same time. This is just an interesting build, good for team play, not much else. I don't really use it all that much unless I'm playing with one of my friends and he needs energy for his specific build. Then we've got the fourth build. This one is built around Balefire. I've tried a lot of different helmets, like almost every single helmet that would possibly have any sort of synergy with Balefire. And Larva is what I settled on for now because it's good at pulling the enemies in. That way you can hit all of them with your bail fire. Uh, mo more importantly is it does not ragdoll the enemies while you are, um, or while they're sucked in. Although, wait a second, I have over shields. Watch, I'm going to be totally wrong about that. Yeah, see, their enemies stay sucked in. That is huge, because if you use something to pull them in like air burst, it's going to pull them in, but as soon as you shoot them with your Balefire, if you got overshields, it's going to rag them ragdoll them back all over the place, and that makes things really annoying. On top of that, Air Burst, if you're going to use it, you probably want to use the Augment for it, where you get bonus... Here, let me go to Zephyr and we can show it. There's an Augment Air Burst rounds 40% secondary damage for 14 seconds when you for every enemy hit by Air Burst that's sucked in has a cap of 500% damage. It is really nice to increase the damage of your Balefire, but then you have to build around duration. Because you don't want to have to spam Air Burst all the time. It's going to be costing a lot of shields, and it takes a while to just throw it around everywhere. So that's just another stat you have to deal with. Whereas with Larva, I can just dump the duration stat. Not, not only is it beneficial, or sorry, not only is it not important, it can be beneficial because then you can cast Larva again, because you can't cast Larva while it's active unless you have the Augment to detonate it and then cast it again. But right now I want to use Balefire Surge, because this Augment's pretty nice. It lets you destroy Nullifier Shields. The problem is it's only on fully charged direct hits that you get shields back, if you're going to use it for that, and 
To fully charge Balefire takes a really long time. It costs four times the shields, but only does two times the damage. So it's very inefficient and takes a really long time. Your DPS ends up being worse. You end up using more shields. It's just not typically worth it. But it can be a way to sustain Aegis Storm. Like if you're an Aegis Storm and you only do fully charged hits and they're direct hits, you can stay in it forever, theoretically. But more or less, I'm just using it to destroy Nullifier Shields because those are an absolute pain. So Larva, in my opinion, is the best way to go if you need any sort of sucky suck power with your Balefire. Because it just, it works so nicely. Being able to suck them all in and not have them thrown around when you shoot at them. I just really like that. This is right now my favorite way of using Balefire. And you can make it do decent damage. If you do... I don't have it on this build because I want to be able to full strip in one cast as well. But you can, like, on this build, if you use Combat Discipline and Arcane Avenger, every time you get a kill, it will take your health away and it counts as damage so you can proc this. And since it's 45% flat crit chance, you can make your Balefire crits. Uh, that's why I have Prime Target Cracker on. It is very much worth it if you want to get as much damage out of Balefire as possible. Though it does take some extra hoops to jump through. Because if then you have to take out your... You use your aura instead of something else like Corrosive Projection. Making full stripping a lot more difficult. But it doesn't end up being too big of an issue if there's a bunch of enemies. Because like in this build I still have Avenger. If I'm getting shot enough, I'm still going to proc Avenger most of the time. So it really depends on the situation you're in. The enemies you're fighting, the mission you're in. Like if you're always being dogpiled by bullets. Now, this is my level cap build. Uh, I don't... I just recorded going to level cap with it. I don't know if it's going to come out before or after I post this video. But it's definitely... I've tried so many builds for level cap as well on Hildren, and this is what I settled on as being the most effective. Though, that was before the Dante update when they nerfed all of the remaining abilities that could affect Eximus, including Breach Surge, so no longer blinds Eximus. That being said, it is still a blind, a CC to normal enemies, and it still gives more damage because of the damage multiplier it has. You can see 6.56. Uh, so it can be very nice. Now, the big problem with Hildren as a tank is that you cannot tank level cap enemies. It's just not going to happen. You need 99.97% damage reduction to be able to not get one shot and that is just absurd there's to realistically have that consistently it's not going to happen so instead i do not go for uh adaptation we ignore that we go vigilante vigor and fast deflection so that if my shields bottom out they start regenerating as soon as possible so i can cast pillage and have it come back uh, because I have negative duration, pillage is 1.45 seconds. Now, one of the best parts about having negative duration on uh, Hildren with pillage is because she has a 3.5 second shield gate, and pillage has normally 2 seconds before it comes back, and even shorter with negative duration 1.45. That means if my shields regenerate fast enough, if they bottom out, and then they regenerate within like half a second, I cast Pillage immediately, I don't even have to force it to come back. My Pillage will come back and give me all of my shields back before my shield gate ends, making her, her basically invincible. It is very, very nice and very effective. Um, in the video of me going to level cap with Hildren, I, I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain I never got down, not even once, because it's just that effective. Uh, Breach Surge for the extra damage, like I said, it can be very nice. I didn't really, I didn't use Balefire like at all, but it can work with Balefire. Because, now, you're always going to want to full strip, otherwise Balefire is not going to do jack shit for damage. But if I do that, and then we'll just charge for the extra big procs. You can see it did some fairly decent damage numbers. Sometimes it does not like to shoot out. 1.5 million was over there. That's a very large number. 249k, 253k, 
So you can do some decent damage to Breach Surge, and it's a crowd control. That's why I decided on it, because it's quite nice to use. Age of Storm still being absolutely worthless in this build, but we're going to hope for a buff to that later on. I have yet to make a build specifically around Age of Storm. I will in the future, uh, probably once I craft my second Hildrum. Now, let's see. A big, big part of Hildrum is wanting to full strip. If you cannot hit the 328% with corrosive projection to full strip, you're going to have to double cast. And to help that, I have two Tau Forged for ability strength. Now, you don't need to have these. You can put another strength mod on. There's other ways to get strength. But this just makes life a lot easier. And I have one for casting speed because it's just nice. The casting speed isn't terrible in Hildren, honestly. It just it gives a bit of quality of life. And then two for parkour velocity because she is really slow. None of these are necessary. You don't need any Archon Shards on your Hildren, okay? All of these builds, you could change out like one or two mods for the extra strength and you can make them still work. And Prime Surefooted also is not necessary. If you really wanted to, you could get rid of Prime Surefooted and replace it with the normal version of Surefooted. And then if you have the mod or you want to buy it, I don't think it's that expensive off trade chat, you can use Fortitude for the other 40% chance to resist knockdown and replace like Vigilante Vigor. You don't get the shield recharge delay, but you do get more shield recharge. And then bam, there you go. You're going to have total resist to knockdown still. Or you can also go Unero. Um, I like to use Zenrake for Void Cascade just because of the slow that Temporal Drag gives. It's pretty nice. But honestly, you can use any focus school you want with any of these builds, and it will work. So you can just go Unero with Poise, which is, I'm sure-footed, but works on your Operator and your Warframe. Uh, so that is an option. Now, my last build is a build... This is like the other main build, other than the, the Blazing Pillage. This is the other main way I see people playing Hildren, is the Elemental Ward. So, Elemental Ward, or at least the... Oh, hang on, I'm on a... My color settings are actually wrong. If we change it, Elemental Ward's Elements is based off of your emissive color, so you want to change the first emissive to match the right, the right color. In this case, you want Electricity for the Shield effects. So, with this, and we go back here, Elemental Ward is going to give you... Why does it still show heat? Son of a sun. Hang on a second. Okay, well, that's a visual bug. We're going to have to go to Chroma to show it off. So, Elemental... Wow, that's highly unfortunate. They really messed up all the UI in the Dante update, didn't they? Well, anyways, if you really want to see the stats, you can look it up on the wiki. But what Elemental Ward does when it's electricity specifically, is it will increase your shield capacity, which is nice on Hildren. It's a percentage based, so since she has a high base shields, it gives a large amount of bonus shields. And it will deflect a hit of damage back an enemy. So if an enemy shoots you and it hits you, damages your shields, it will deal a that damage back at the enemy multiplied. Uh, I believe the base multiplication of it is 10, so at 300% strength, it should do 30 times damage back at the enemy. Uh, it can only proc one time every time you get hit. Like, it's only once at a time. But if you're getting hit all the time and it just shoots all the damage back at them, it is going to decimate enemies, even at level cap, because enemy damage skills way harder than enemy health. If you make sure to cast Pillage so they're full stripped, if an enemy shoots you, they're dead. Like, they will die. They cannot survive that. And it's... It's decently effective. We can show it off. Hang on a second. Now, part of the problem is if you're fighting enemies that don't do one big hit of damage, it's not going to be able to do a whole lot. Like these guys, they don't do a large hit of damage here. So if we run over here, you can see... Oh, hold up. I'm on the wrong missive again. Let's... Or not? Where was that toxin proc from then? What? Okay, let's try this again. Um.
a toxin prop? Well, it would appear that this is currently very bugged. Uh, toxin elemental ward? I mean, it says, okay, maybe even though it shows that, I need to have all blue. Okay, we're going to try to fix this real quick. So, let's go blue. And then another blue. Hope that fixes it, so that I can actually show how this works. There we go. Right? No, is that still toxin? There ain't no way. Oh, okay. Well, this is broken right now. Um, that's unfortunate. So I, I might have to cut this out I, if I figure out how video editing works. Well, normally this build will do big damage back then, reflecting. The more damage you take, the more damage it deals to them. It's nice, but it's entirely dependent on being hit. And that can be annoying. It can only do hit one enemy at a time. It doesn't like arc between them. So it's nice for a brain dead way of playing Hildren, but otherwise I don't care for it a whole lot. I still have it here. I'm probably going to replace it with an Aegis Storm build uh, if I don't end up do waiting to do that on another Hildren that I craft. Now, I'm still testing out more stuff with Hildren. I've tested so much stuff, but I'm going to keep testing stuff to find different ways to play Hildren or something that's more effective. I'm really hoping in the future they buff Balefire and Asia Storm. Honestly, I don't think Pillage needs changed at all. It is just insanely broken. Haven, it, it could use a slight buff. Maybe have not caught, it shouldn't cost as much energy to, or shields to buff teammates and tag enemies. But overall, Haven's not that bad of an ability. It's really just Balefire needs a stat buff to its crit or status. Either one, I'll take either one. Just one is enough. Because you can make a gas build if you have enough status. And Aegis Storm, if they let us aim with Balefire, and they'll just cast Pillage in it, that's all I need. It'll be good. Maybe some extra movement speed would be nice, but just those first two would make it so, so much better. Uh, oh yeah, I never went over Arcanes for the most part on all of these. Unless you need the extra strength from Molt Augmented, or you're trying to go for a crit on Balefire by using Arcane Avenger. You can use whatever arcanes you want. Uh, I really like Aegis because it makes you invincible pretty much when it procs. You get so much shield recharge. And another good one is Barrier because she's so dependent on shields. Being able to take damage and just have a chance for its all to be restored back to you. It's quite nice. That's why I like my normal brain dead tank build. The first one I went over has Barrier and Aegis. So I can just turn my brain off and run through a mission while I'm the big muscle mommy. So, uh, before I finish this companion-wise, I think it is very important to run a Sentinel with Guardian, because Guardian, it restores all of your shields if they bottom out. It, has a, it doesn't say here, but on the wiki it should say it has a 30 second cooldown, which can be affected by Manifold Bond. Alright, killing enemies with three or more unique stats effects reduces ability cooldowns of your companions by three seconds. So 10 kills on enemies with three unique stats effects, bam, Guardian's refreshed. So this gives you so, so much more survivability with Hildren. It's just, it's huge. Negate, I like to use Worms specifically because Negate also fixes getting magnetized, so you don't lose all your shields from that. So Reinforced Bond is really nice here because Worm is the only one that can normally get its shields high enough. And Reinforced Bond helps fix the terrible fire rate on Balefire. It's just very convenient, so that this is the Sentinel I use on every single build I use for Hildren. Uh, then, obviously, I have Volk Lock with higher than 50% crit chance, so I can proc Tenacious Bond, so I also get higher crit, which helps, again, Balefire's terrible base crit. So, I don't think there's any better pet, or at least not right now, for Hildren in most builds than Worm. So... Weapon-wise, I don't think there's really a lot of weapons with a unique synergy other than the Rock to Dark Dagger. This is pretty great because when you hit enemies affected by radiation, it gives you shields and overshields. If you're spamming this everywhere, especially with melee influence, you you can be very, very tanky. But my problem with that is I just I don't care for the melee play of daggers. So for now, I'm going to stick with this build right here. I'm going to try different stuff with it, see how it goes. I just wanted to share 
stuff that I learned about using Hildren or saw in other videos and stuff and just put it together. That way there's more information about Hildren out there because I wish there was more videos about Hildren so I could gather more information. So hopefully this was useful. If it helps even one Hildren player, then I'm going to be satisfied. That's all I'm here for is to help at least one person have more information. So uh, thanks for watching and go play the muscle mommy. She's the best.